Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial which is a beginner's look at Affinity Photo and this is part 2. Now in part 1 at the beginning I did a brief look at the interface of Affinity Photo and just a sort of brief recap is down the left we have tools icons um, for things like you know arrows, text, crop tool, brushes and things like that. Along the top we have the main menus and icons for other options you know like changing the different personas and other things like that which are sort of probably slightly more advanced at this present moment in time and then down the right we have the studios and the various tabs. Now I'm going to first look at opening an image into Affinity Photo. If you come up to the file menu and down here we have open and you can also use the keyboard shortcuts uh, control and O or in, on a Mac it's command and O and you do also have the option to open something that you have sort of um, opened previously um, but if you click on the open option you can then navigate to where your images are and the one that you want to open so if I can just find the one I wanted to look at um, put it on there and we'll pick that one so this is an image that I took of where I live walking on the Nays and uh, so that is sort of how easy it is to open an image you can also if you have you, know, you can open the Explorer or whatever the equivalent is on a Mac and if Affinity Photo is your default photo editor if you double click on the image that too will open up that image in Affinity Photo so I don't need two of these open so I'll just close this one and we'll work on this one so that is like three different ways that you can open up your image either by double clicking on the file itself or come into file and open or control plus O or command plus O or if you've opened it before the open recent option so once you have an image into the main window here and then you can start to edit it now like I said in the previous video it's not until that you have opened an image that a lot, you know, a lot of these options will be available if you don't have anything open these will be greyed out and you cannot do anything now there's also an option to start a brand new project so let me just close this down and let's say you want to sort of make a poster or something like that so you need to start a new project so you can come to file and new and this will open up the options here that you can open new documents now you have various options here you know you can go I have it sort of set on print so you get like in the English sizes is like A6, A5, A4, A3 and I think the American sizes are ANSI and Ledger, Legal and Letter and then there's loads of other different sizes down here and there's things like business cards 12 inch vinyl cover, 7 inch vinyl cover, CD booklet covers so you've got all sorts of different options there and then you do also have photo sizes like 6x4, 7x5, 10x8 and presets for web pages different options there 
but I will stick with the print options and I'm going to go with an A5 option here I'll click on A5 then you can also have this to open either portrait or landscape um, just by clicking on one or the other and as you can see the sizes will change as I click on portrait or landscape and another sort of fairly important option here is whether you want to start with a transparent background which you use to put a tick into this box or you can if you untick that it will start with a white background now if you're going to be making like a PNG file that needs a transparent background it's probably best to sort of just leave it on transparent background you can always add a colored background later if you so wish so then you just click on create and it will create a blank document that you can then start working on so I'll just so that is how you could start a new project so I'll just shut that down so this is how you can open different projects so I'll go to open recent which was this one I took here now the other thing I sort of touched on in the first video was working destructively or non-destructively destructively is you affect the layer directly and those alterations are I mean you can always sort of do undo um, using control and Z and I believe yeah I, there is also an undo button up here in the edit menu and as I haven't done anything yet to this image it's greyed out and can't be used but like I said it is control and Z to undo something but if you've done you know six seven destructive edits already you and you want to undo the first one you would have to sort of undo all the edits above it and sort of to get and restart which is why it's best to work non-destructively wherever you can by using different layers and the layers are displayed over here in the layers panel so that is uh, the, the, again recapping on the destructive and non-destructive options now there is a sort of a set of adjustments that you can use and they are so unsurprisingly called adjustments um, and they all when you select them will start as new layers so the program is sort of forcing you to work non-destructively now you can get to the adjustments you come up to the layers menu and you should have here here we go new adjustment layer so you have all these different adjustments here you know like levels white balance brightness um, many of these well not many but a few of these have keyboard shortcuts like levels is control and L and if I click on that it will open up a layers um, box here that you can make all your adjustments in and hopefully you can see over here in the layers panel it has automatically made that a layer above the background layer so let me just delete that now again like I said in the previous video there are more than one way to do certain jobs so you can open the adjustments via the layer menu you can also open the options by this half black and white circle down here so if you click on that you've got all the same options you know levels white balance and what have you so again if I click on levels it will open that same box 
and make a new layer. We just delete that again. Now also next to the layers tab there is an adjustments tab. If you click on that you have all the options there as well. And if I say click on levels here what it will do is it will open up some defaults um, some supplied with the program and some in some cases are ones that I've made myself but you have the default one here so if I click on that it will again open up the layers panel and again made that layer above the background there now all adjustment layers will come with what is called a layer mask attached to it and you know this because it has this white icon now layer mask is something that a lot of people have a lot of trouble understanding and I can sort of see why but it is fairly easy uh, concept and I have sort of made in the past a video about this and I will add the link to that in the description to this video but I'll try and do this as brief as possible you have to think of a layer mask as like a, a sheet of glass that you lay above the image now although it is white this sheet of glass is see-through so any alterations you make here will be see-through over the whole image but if you paint black onto that sheet of glass you will make it non-visible in the area that you've painted black on um, so to try and demonstrate this I'm going to I want to sort of darken down this grass area here um, so if I just bring the black level to the right and bring the gamma also to the right and I just close that so as you can see although I have darkened down this green area down here which is what I was aiming to do I have also darkened down the sky and the sea and what have you which is not, not what I wanted to do I just wanted to do this area but because this sort of imaginary sheet of glass is covering the whole image and is all see-through that effect that I've just done will affect the whole image but what I need to do is select the paintbrush make sure that black is the color um, that is on the paintbrush and make sure that the level adjustment and the layer mask that is attached to it is the layer that is selected and let me just make the brush bigger and you can increase and decrease the brush size by the square bracket keys left will make it smaller right will make it bigger and as you can see because I'm painting black onto this imaginary piece of glass it will make that dirty for want of a better phrase and you cannot see the effect that this levels adjustment is having in those areas so I'm going to just paint and this is only going to be a rough sort of job I'm not going to be too fine in this because it's just showing you how the layer mask works so there we can see I haven't you see by that icon now that it is given us sort of a rough representation of where I've painted to painted black on that area so you can't see the effect of the level adjustment where I have painted black 
and if I turn this on and off that is the without the level adjustment and that is with the level adjustment and hopefully that you sort of see how that works so you could then you can add multiple adjustments you could sort of add um, let's go we're trying to find one that was easy to let's try lens filter now this will just give a sort of in this case orange colorize let me come off this tour second orange colorization to the whole image and as you can see that adjustment has also got the layer mask attached to it so let me change the colors so if you click on the color box here you can then say change that to a blue color if you wanted to make it a bit cooler see this time although I've made the sky and the sea a little bit bluer I don't necessarily want that in the bottom so again I can come to the paintbrush tool make sure black is my color and make sure that this is the layer that I want to affect and I can paint on here at the bottom and just take some of that blue away from the bottom area not that it was having a great effect but it's just showing you now how the layer mask can be used with different adjustments so that is a quick look at the adjustments and how you can use them let me come off this tool here now also there is a, an option to combine everything that you've done so far into one layer now you can do this I think, layer and it should be maybe down here merge visible and this is a keyboard shortcut of com control alt shift and e which is sort of quite difficult to do but you could just click on merge visible you can also sort of right click the top layer and come down to merge visible and this will make a new layer that has all the adjustments that you've previously made so if you wanted you could turn all these off it has no effect because this layer is now a combination of all the layers below so technically you could delete these ones but you may not want to because you may want to use this layer in some way to have an effect on the layers below now you could do this by altering its blend mode now this is the layer that is highlighted and at the moment it's set on normal but if you click on the menu here you can come down and change the blend mode and you could try them all and see which one has an effect that you like now in this particular case there's probably none of these will actually work on my image but hopefully you can see the different effects you can get by having that merge layer above the layers that you've already edited and have a new effect so I mean that one's like negation it looks like almost like an infrared image and that's again another sort of infrared image with contrast negate so this is an, a, a good way that you can use to merge visible now if you was going to sort of you're going to make a composite picture where you sort of 
add an element into a picture that was never there. I mean, I can't think of something. I was going to say you've got to put a boat here in the sea. And you've cut out an image of a boat and you have it on its own layer. Um, you then might want to alter the colorization of that boat but you don't want to affect the colorization of the whole image and this is where you sort of make a child layer of an adjustment just to affect that boat now I'm, I'm sorry but I haven't sort of already pre-cut out a boat um, well, you just have to imagine this would be um, the boat image and I want to make an adjustment to this that is not going to affect anything in fact what I would do might make this slightly easier is if I reduce the size of this down so this is my imaginary boat so if I add an adjustment now by default, it will, adjustments always open above the highlighted layer. So if I add an adjustment now, it will be above this layer, but it would affect the whole image, everything, including this layer and all those below. So I just want to affect this layer. So we need to make a child layer of this. Now, you can do this in um, a number of ways is this option up here which says insert inside selection and I think there's a layer up here in the layers menu I should say and it should be in here as you can tell I don't use this so much no it's not in there it might be in the arrange there we go in the arrange menu, sorry for that. So, insertion inside. I'll try and use this option here. So, if you click on that icon there, the next thing you do will be inserted inside or made a child layer of the layer that is selected. So, I'm going to add an adjustment and I'm going to again go with levels so as you can see the levels adjustment I've just added which would normally be added above the selected layer because I clicked on that icon first it is inserted or made a child layer and now any adjustments I make to this will only affect this layer here and not the whole image so I'm just going to sort of go over the top and make this really dark just so you can see it and as you can see it only affected that it didn't affect the whole image so this is why you make child layers just so they will only affect the layer that they are a child of and not the whole image and again because this levels adjustment has a layer mask attached I could sort of get the paintbrush and have it set in black color and I'll reduce the size and as you can see I'm, I'm having I wouldn't have any effect on here because the levels adjustment that I've got selected means that it will only affect this layer so so for example I could make the C area lighter so that is like looking at layer masks and child layers so I think for now that will do with this particular tutorial so thank you for watching and goodbye